Loveline is meant for an adult audience. Loveline is meant for an adult audience. Loveline may contain sexually oriented content. Loveline may contain sexually oriented content. Listener discretion is advised. Listener discretion is advised. One eight hundred love one nine one. Loveline starts now. Hey everybody, it's Loveline. Phone number is one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. I'm Dr. Drew, and I'm pleased to welcome in the studio tonight Jason Muse. You know him as Jay from Jay and Silent Bob. Hello, hey, James. Do you actually go by Jay, or should we say Jason? Either one's good. Either one's good. So, what are you up to these days? Uh, not much. Playing a lot of video games. I heard you were on Degrassi. <clears throat> My kids' friends were very impressed by that. Yeah, yeah. We just uh, the DVD just came out. Um, me and Kevin were on three, well, he was on three episodes and I was on two. And we just went back and did uh, two more episodes. So let, let me sort of set this up for everybody. Kevin Smith, Silent yeah. Bob, directs yes. and produces a lot of these films. Correct. Chasing Amy. That was the last time he was on Loveland. He was up with his girlfriend. Joey. Joey Lawrence. Yes, yeah, so that must have been years and years ago. That was years ago. He's been, yeah, he's married now. Seven, is it seven years? Wow. Now? We haven't seen him in a long time. He's still he's still doing lots of stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We well, he just was. Uh, you know, we just got done. He's editing right now. Clerks too. That's so, coming out in the summer. I, they're looking for August, I, I believe. Again, so both Jason and Kevin were in Clerks, which is classic, right? Everyone yes. has seen that, hopefully. And then Clerks two coming out in the summer. Yep, yep. Is that you happy with that one? Yeah, yeah, it was fun. Do you live out here now? I do. I live right in Hollywood. And you originally grew up in New Jersey. Yep. How'd you end up out here? <clears throat> um, Kevin moved out here. A lot of my friends moved out here. Milanakis. Did you know? Oh, you knew Andy from out there? I know Andy for oh, no. nine years now. I'm from uh, New York, Andy Milanakis. Were you? And did you know him when he was still a, a computer hacker? I did. Were, what I did. were you doing? That's then? how we. That's how we met because. Um, well, he was. He used to. We have a view of board. We have our own website, like. Right. <clears throat> and uh, he used to go on there, and we did a signing in New York, and we used to chat on the board. And he made he was dirty Kevin. talk. No, it's uh, dirty Andrew, talk. Yeah. Dirty, 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 dirty. It's dirty talk. Hey, that's Andy. That's <laughs> he um, he used to do uh, mixtapes. So anyway, we were talking about it online, and he met me in at this uh, mall rat signing. And, and was he a fan of the movies? I uh, I believe yeah, I believe like he you know he was on the board I think. And you figured he was just some fourteen year old kid who was into the movie. Yeah. <laughs> and he brought me a tape at the signing, and uh, I was like, how old are you? And he's like, I think he was 21 at the time, or 22. And uh, I was like, let's go to the bar. Because we were done with our signing, me and him went and hung out all night and got drunk. And oh, how funny. It was fun. It was fun. And we hung out. We've been hanging out ever since. And he moved out here, and Kevin had moved out here. And this is before he was Andy Melanakis. It, it was. He was still Well, he was always Melan Andy Melanakis. But he Melanakis, was an IT but, guy. Yeah. I mean, to everyone else, he wasn't. He was just a, a, a sort of IT Computer guy. Yeah, yeah, he was just at a, at a company, an operating, functioning Fixing servers and things. Yep, yep. Amazing. And that's it. So, uh, and then he came out here and he was uh, doing the Jimmy Kimmel show. And Right. And you and you then, followed him out here? No, I didn't follow him out here, but I'm saying, in, like, a lot of my friends moved out. Like, four of my friends moved out here, and, and only one I have back in Jersey is my sister. So I was like, so I decided to make the move out here finally. And Plus, you, the weather's nice. And when you first <laughs> made the films with Kevin, you were still living in New Jersey, and you, you knew each other from back there? Uh, yeah, I've so known you, Kevin since high school. So you're like lifelong friends, basically. Yeah. What was he like in high school? Um, I don't know. He's, I didn't really hang out with him as much in high school because he's four four years older than I am. Mm -hmm. So you know, I was like freshman. He was senior. How'd you um, hook back up as friends then? So we uh, there's a community center in in uh, our town Highlands, and he used to work there. And we used to I used to go there and play hockey all the time and stuff. And, he liked comics and I like comics. So we started talking about comics and uh, comic books. And uh, we started going to comic book shows in New York together and stuff. Do you collect comics? I do. I haven't, I haven't uh, got any in a while. Well, I have to catch up, but we have a comic book store in Red Bank called Jan Saint Bob Secret Stash. Oh, interesting. And uh, Red Bank, and there's one in uh, West, uh, Westwood, on Westwood Boulevard. Here in L.A.? Or? Yeah, yeah, here in L.A. Wow. 1045 Westwood Boulevard. There Check you go. it out. <laughs> we figured you'd get us something to plug tonight anyway. And are you single now? Are you involved with somebody? What's happening in your yeah, love life? I'm dating some. I'm dating a girl named Jana. Uh, that's been about a month now. Oh, it's a new relationship. It is new. I haven't uh, dated anyone in, I think, like four or five years. Like, committed uh, relationship. Just dating. hooking up. Just see a little fooling around, you know. <laughs> I was trying to trying to find. There's always something. Hang out with someone. That, you know, it's it's okay. But 
How old are you now? 20, 30? 31. 31. Okay. 31. I'm getting old there. Look at that. Getting up there. All right, let's see if we can help some of our callers out, all right? You ready? Mm hmm. All right, here we go. This is uh, Roman 19. Roman? R hey, Dr. Drew. I'm a big fan. What's up, buddy? Um, I'm having problems staying excited with monogamy, I guess. Like, I'm dating this girl right now. We've been dating for six months. And I'm always thinking about getting um, oral from other girls. He's 19. Jay? And 19. I've, I've acted on this before in the past. Like, I've cheated on a bunch of girlfriends in the past. And I'm I'm really trying to not mess this one up. So now are you are you telling me you can't control your impulses, or you're telling me, geez, I'm not ready for a relationship, maybe, and I'm just a screw up. I'm 19. I can't re quite quite manage this yet. Which is um, it? Because they're very different issues. If you can't contain your impulses, that that's a more serious thing. I can like I I, I can. I'm just having trouble staying excited with just one girl. I guess. Well, this if you add up that, that whole score here, Jay, what do you think about this? 19. You have trouble getting an erection with her? You're too young to date, no, no, anyway. Fine. I just, too young to date? Well, not too young, but I'm saying, you know, explore a little bit more, I would think. Too young to have a girlfriend. If, if you can't control, I would say don't settle down yet. That's why I was just saying I haven't dated in four years until recently. Because you knew you couldn't settle down with one well, person. Well, just because I wanted to wait until I found someone that I know that if some attractive girl wants to... Go down on me. I'm gonna be able to say no because I care about this other girl. Roman, can you do that? Uh, no. Why not just uh -oh. keep her? Ask, tell her you just want to hang out with her and, and hang out with other girls. Just be honest with her. Tell her to deal. Or no. there's a little bit of a different. But that, that's I, I'm I'm with you on that absolutely. Uh, but there's another possibility here. If you sort of add up your score here, Roman, uh, can't maintain a relationship, starting to lose your sexual interest very quickly. Yeah. All that kind of adds up to a difficulty with closeness, difficulty with intimacy. I, that sounds right. Like, yeah. I'm actually, I even called a girl one time and tried to get oral from her, and it, it just didn't work out, which, I mean, I'm kind of happy about that now, but like, I, I can't even believe I called her in the first place, you know? It's, Is oh, Roman your real name? Does, do you think your girl's listening right now? Uh, actually, I think she is. She, she wanted me to call in about this. Cause oh. She, she so she knows. She knows you, I are, called this other girl and that it didn't work out. Oh, and, okay. Like, we've been having this big trust issue. and. Are and you an actually, addict, Roman? You addicted to anything else? Uh, I, yeah, I'm addicted to marijuana, if you could say that. <laughs> well, yeah, there, oh, that's, you can what, definitely what say you that. Think, Jason, can you, can you be addicted to marijuana? To marijuana. Um, I wouldn't say addicted. I'd say it's more of a habit thing. Yeah. I have, well, if, I have if not addicted, habit. you can go ahead and stop and stay and stop. The problem is very few people can do that. It's actually one of the most serious addictions we're dealing with right now. It's probably pretty much 50% of admissions for chemical dependency involve pot right now, if not pot is the primary drug. Yeah, and, uh, and, when people, and when people stop pot, they miss it the, sometimes the most of any of their other drugs. The cravings, the drive, the preoccupation with it, it is profound. So I do. I run a program. I deal with it every day, every day. And it's one of the more serious ones we're dealing with right now. Well, if you're still using it, you're, that, you, you go ahead and stop and see what it feels like. No, I, I, I have stopped. I have three years right now. So, But I mean, tough. not off of that. I've done it all. So. Well, the, see and the, it wasn't the toughest for me. It was the easiest for me. Well, that's talk, me personally. Well, no, no. Let, here's how pot works. Is it you? It's the first round you find, mm -hmm. and you love it. Yeah. You love it. It's the greatest thing ever. When you found something you love more than anything else, what do you do? You do that every day. Yeah. Yeah. And it works and it feels great. Somewhere between 1 and 30 years, and it's different for every individual, mm -hmm. that, that I love it feeling starts to wear off. And you start getting depressed and irritable. You experience it as this doesn't work anymore. I need to smoke more. You start smoking more, and suddenly you're not feeling good. You can't do things. You're irritable. And that's when you switch over to something else. And those other things can become more difficult to stop because the yeah, pot okay, you I leave behind... But if, you, if I catch you just as you switch to amphetamine, let's say, the one you'll miss, not the amphetamine, you'll miss the pot because that's mm -hmm. a much better feeling than speed, yeah. even though speed corrects the depression of the marijuana. Really? And so, but if, it's, if you go on to opiates and you get strung out on opiates for three years, that's the one because it, mm -hmm. it affects the same part of the brain as the pot. Yeah, yeah. It's the anterior okay. cingulate. And so, so the Vicodin, the Oxycontin, the heroin, whatever, that becomes a much more powerful drive at that point. But most oh. people graduate to speed. And they don't miss the speed. They miss the pot. Mm -hmm. That's sort of how that goes. So, Roman, you're in the beginning of all these issues. Was your dad an alcoholic or something or your mom? Um, 
No, no, neither of them. My my grandpa had an addiction to cigarettes. No, nah, it doesn't count. Well, maybe maybe you're not marijuana addicted. Maybe you're just compulsed, and maybe you're just you're going to put this all down, and it's going to be part of your sort of uh, adolescent enthusiasm and exuberance. But I, I'm really concerned about how you're containing your, your how you're managing relationships. It suggests trouble in the future. And if your girlfriend's listening. Uh, Roman's girlfriend, be prepared to jump ship. He can either tolerate closeness or he can't. And whether he's ready for it or because he's got a long-term problem, either case, it's not good for you. Emily, 17. Can we get high? Oh, hi, Dr. Drew. Emily. Oh, my God. I was so in love with you. And, like, I can't believe it. And I'm looking at a group project right now and people don't believe me. Wait, hold on a second. <laughs> Did you hear that? I don't quite know what was said. but Sorry, I had to turn speaker phone off. Okay, so... I'm really hoping you can answer this question because no one will tell me why. Okay, so, slow down. Slow okay. down. You, okay. you ever seen the film The Clerks? Um, yeah, I have. <laughs> Lying. Jane, um, How about yeah. Jane, Jane and Silent Bob? No, no, I totally have. It's like those two guys who work and one's at the video store and one's at the drug store. Yeah. That's, she's right. Well, this is Jay. And uh, you see him on Degrassi? Um, right. no. Okay. All right, what's huh? your question, Emily? She's like, okay. I don't care. So it's all about is, you. So like, what? Okay, so yesterday I came into my friend's room, and he just got out of the shower, and he had one red foot, and like it was like, like when it's really steamy and your skin kind of turns red. Yeah. And I was like, Kenya, why do you have a red foot? And Q was like, Oh, um, like doesn't it happen to you? And I was like, No. And he's like, Oh, I guess it only happens to guy. And then Yoshi walked in the room, and they were like, Yoshi, don't you get a red foot? He's like, Yeah, it's my left foot. And they're like, Oh, I guess it's because you're left-handed. And I was like okay and it was really weird and then i asked another friend and i was like why do boys get red feet and he's like really explicit so he would tell me and he's like oh i'm not going to tell you it's kind of personal and i like harassed him for a long time and he wouldn't tell me and then i asked like another guy like online without telling him that i was me and like <laughs> pretending that i was like one of his friends and i was like why do you guys get one shut up what? Hey, emily emily what? you're in college now yeah i am so at 17 yeah kind of young huh yeah what happened? You skipped some grades, or my mommy and daddy let me go to first grade when I was still in kindergarten because I knew how to read. Oh, very nice. And evidently, what you're up in Stanford now. Yeah. Outstanding. Thank well, you. Oh my I think... God, I'm so excited. My best friend and I have been listening Red to you foot. since we were like 13. Well, let, listen to this conversation, Emily, right now. Uh, Jay, okay. ever had a red foot? I never had a red no. foot. No, me neither, Emily. So. Uh, it seems like your your uh, buddies there in the dorm were sort of ganging up on the youngin. No, I don't think so because I asked like a bunch of random guys mm. and they like didn't know either. Or like, no, not that they didn't know. Sorry, I can't think because I'm really nervous. But I asked some other random guys and they started laughing and they were like, I'm not telling you what it is. They're like really good friends who like don't talk to each other either. Or good friends with me. That I don't think talk people to are ganging guys. up on you. I really do. I, I don't know what, I, I'm trying to figure out what the two red feet were that you yeah, actually it's saw. One. It's like well, one. Right. And wait, so if I find out, because my friend said that if you didn't tell me, that he would tell me. So if I find out, can I call back and let you know? Why don't you put us on hold, and I'll come oh. back to you in about 10 minutes, and you find out what they're up to, okay? Okay, sounds good. All right. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> this is uh, Rachel, 17. Oh, okay. Hi. Um, my thing is, okay, I work with a bunch of guys that are a lot older than me. I'm like, you know, I'm only 17. And... This one guy, he's really, really hot. Like, I'm not kidding. And we flirt a lot, and he's married. You must work in a restaurant. No, I work at a car dealership. Oh, so much the better. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Yeah. So it's a salesman that you're flirting with? No, he's a detailer, actually. A detailer. He's so hot the way he deals <laughs> those cars. It's awesome. <laughs> All right, so okay. he's so married. Yeah, he's the, married. What the F are you doing, Rachel? What's the deal? Um, I can't. I don't know. He started it. Oh, okay. Well, that makes it okay then. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, and what am I thinking? Anyways, he's 25, and he's married. And I don't know. We got to talking one night, and uh -huh. uh, we just, I don't know, it just kind of got out of hand. And then he called me on the company phone and uh, he pretty much just openly offered to have sex with me. Shocking. Can you imagine yeah. that? A young 25-year-old <laughs> asking an 18-year-old to have sex with them? That is shocking. Well, Jay, what should she do? Me? No, no. We're asking Jay. Are you asking if you should have sex with this guy? Well, I don't know. 
What about when you're married one day? Would you want your husband to have sex with someone else? Well, no. <clears throat> Is your fantasy that he's going to leave his wife and run off with you? No, not at all. Good. But my thing is, is karma. It's bad karma if you sleep with them. <laughs> you get married one day, it'll happen to you. That's what I believe. I think that's a reason. Karma. That's a reasonable way to approach this, Rachel. Uh. <laughs> no, you know, she's like, no, that ain't the answer I wanted. Well, I want no, you to tell me to have great sex just, with them. Does he have kids? Uh, no. Thank God. Thank <laughs> Christ. Well, I'm not like I'm not like meaning it to be like bad or anything but i know you don't mean it to be but it will be for somebody well, I but i'm there's, like i don't there's know plenty of other never... guys out there aren't married sure hotter than him <sighs> i don't, you don't know think? <laughs> well then why bad. why go with someone that's married i don't it's know naughty there's no naughty one, does no one ever show you uh <laughs> ever show you any interest other than this guy um i don't well i haven't had a lot i mean i've had one guy but do you like the fact that this guy's unavailable? No, I don't like that at all. I like the fact that he's hot. All right, Rachel. Well, I, we can repeat the same thing 30 times here. You're going to do what you're going to do. For God's sakes, use birth control, whatever you do, and wear a condom. God only knows who else this guy's pulled this crap with. Amanda, 19. Yes. Here you go. <laughs> Amanda. Yes. Yes, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, I have a question about um, my husband and I's his sexual relationships. Um, we live at his parents' house, and we have two kids, been married for one, together for four. Um, don't really like the fact of having intimate relationships at his mom's house. Are the kids right in the room with you? Oh, no. No. Have you seen that commercial where the uh, mom's in there going through the the drawers, setting up their socks, and because honey, there's a oh, an adult man in bed, and she's talking to him as though she's he's like a teen, young teenager, and uh, then all of a sudden this woman sits up and he goes, oh hi honey, and uh, she goes, we got to get our own house. This is ridiculous. It's, it's ridiculous, <laughs> no, man. Seen that this is why you don't get married. You're 19, by the way. So what does he do for a living? Uh, right now, he's unemployed. That's why we live with Right him. now? Always a bad way to start a, a description of what someone's doing for employ. Well, right now, you're not going to say he's an astronaut, <laughs> he's airline pilot, uh, neurosurgeon. No. Right now, he's working at Arby's, or right now, he has no work. Right. He, he has no work right What now. are you doing? I've been a stay-at-home mom for three years. Why isn't he working? I, he lost his job. Uh, yeah, I'm sure he lost the job. Why he's, <laughs> as a matter of fact, why he's not working, but what's the reason that prevents him from going forward with further work? Uh, a car. God, yeah, a college you have to be so explicit in what you're asking. So concrete. What? A what is car. it? What? It's a car. Transportation. He can't get a car to find a job. All right. That's BS. What's well, the real his reason? Parents are, his parents are always gone, and their car is usually the one that we use. What's the real reason? Oh, that is the real reason. I'm no, serious. no way, no way. Yeah. There's bus, buses, yeah, cabs. He'd, he'd find a way. He's got to support a family. What's the real reason? Is he just sit around smoking pot? Is he just lazy oh, generally? God, no. Is he drinking all the time? What's he doing? Oh no, that's not it at all. What's I, the problem? He's always he's always on the internet looking for jobs and posting his resume and everything, but right. it's just and nobody ever calls him back. Is something about him we should know? Is he present strangely? Is he? Oh no, he's a very good guy. That doesn't make sense, Amanda. So, so that then he will find work, and uh, if that's the case, he will find work. It's an active, you know, economy right now. People get jobs. He'll find work. He'll carpool with his buddies. He'll go to work, and uh, you guys get an apartment, move out. That's got to be the goal. In the meantime, you got kind of suck it up. But he can't. He can't uh, sort of um, wallow. He can't, uh, you know, just meander through all this. He has to be very, very concerted in his effort to get out of there. And if he's not, then there's something wrong. There's something wrong. It's not that he's not finding work. There's something wrong with him and his ability to create action or to, or he's lazy or he's got something wrong with him emotionally. I don't know what it is, but uh, he needs to find a job. Do you agree? Oh, I agree. I mean, if you think about it, if you were, you're in wherever they are and you've stuck with your parents and kids and your wife, I mean, you'd, you'd become a day laborer, right? Yeah, if you, you had to do work something. Starbucks or something. You do something, right? You do anything. You get out, you find a way to do something. And the fact that he doesn't do that, I mean, is he spoiled? What is, what, I mean, that thing's too probably good looking for him. at porn on on the internet. He's telling his wife that, you know, he's looking for a job, but he's not. He's downloading porn. No. On the chat rooms. 
No? no chat rooms. But where, where do you live at? Do you live in, like, a... Do you live in Hollywood? No, we live in Independence, Missouri. This shows all over uh, the country. Uh, <laughs> so, not everyone lives oh, in Hollywood. Never mind. I know, it, I know it shocks you. But so much the better. I mean, there's lots of... I'm sure there's lots of opportunities in little towns. Mm -hmm. you can well, network, is, is it possible he's just goofing around on the internet? Uh, I hope not. Uh, oh, you don't know? You don't watch? Well, no, I do watch. I'm usually right by him because the computer's in the living room. So... So maybe, why don't you maybe have, have him stay, not that you should, but maybe he could stay home. You can get a job, no? Uh, well, She's not I mean, I putting could. any hustle on his game. What's the matter? I, I, I could. It's just I like being home with my kids. Good. That's great. And it's noble. And you stay with your parents now. You stay with your in-laws. Fantastic. Enough so said. why don't you get That's a no-play, player? There you go. All right. Uh, well, let's, talk, let's go back to Emily at Stanford and see if she's found out what the red feet are about. Emily? Emily? Oh, yeah. Emily, Emily. 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 My friend is on the phone. They're trying to make him call me right now. So can you give me another, like, five minutes? Okay, we'll call you. Hold on. We'll put you on hold. Five more minutes. <laughs> the friend's on the phone. Going to tell her about the red feet. Uh, Emily will believe just about anything, I'm afraid to say. All right. Jay and Silent Bob is the movie. And, uh, well, yes. And uh, the Clerks and Clerks 2 coming out in the summer. We got Jay here. Those of you that watch Degrassi have seen him on that as well. Chasing Kevin, Chasing Amy, and Evening with Kevin Smith, done all kinds of stuff with Kevin Smith, of course. You were in Scream 3 as well? Yeah, Kevin and I had a quick scene, one scene in it. That's fun. All right, well, listen, we've got your calls lined up here. Call us at 1-800-LOVE-191, and Dr. Drew and Jay will be right back. Yep, Love Line will be back. Glad to hear it. Love Line will be right back. That's right, 1 800 L O V E 191 Love Line. He is Jay from Jay and Silent Bob and Clerks. And we have a question for him right now. This is Anthony. And then we're going to solve the mystery of the red foot. Anthony, 15. Yeah. What's up, hey, buddy? Dr. J. Hey, Jason. Big fan. Thank you. Jason, do you have any upcoming movies coming up besides Clerks 2? Like any plans? He's got a list um, of. Uh, you want to read that list? When, I won't read them all, but there's uh, there's some uh, I did some independent. So I mean I'm not sure what's gonna happen, but I did like a, a movie called Bottoms Up, um, and Jack's Law. I don't, I don't I've done a few, but we'll we'll see what happens. Do I have anything that I'm planning on shooting after? Not right now. We just got done about a week and a half, two weeks ago with Clerks Two, and now I'm just sitting around playing video games and nothing exciting. Yeah, good times. Yeah, it's good sure. time. You man. sound high, dude. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not. Oh, uh, no. All right, else, yeah, anything else, Anthony? No, just saying. I love Jim and Jane, Simon and Bob Strike Back. Thank you very much. <gasps> All right, buddy. Good times. Good times. Here's Andy21. You're going to help us solve the red foot problem. We had a call, Emily from Stanford, who's who saw somebody coming out of a shower with a red foot, and all the boys ganged up on her and said, Oh, yeah, that's something guys get, and we can't mm -hmm. tell you what it is. So, Andy, what do you think it is? Um, I just, I don't know, I've had a few friends who, uh, uh had the same thing, and, uh, they just say it's athlete's foot, you know, like when they're in the shower, they just scratch it, and their feet get red. Oh, And then, especially boy. if you live in the, uh, in dorms, you know, those bathrooms are nasty, and we're sure that stuff spreads around. Now, this is wonderful. It there, there's yeah. a number of different funguses you can get on your feet, and they can turn the foot red. And there are also some vascular problems that people can get, as well as swelling in the foot. But let's see what, uh, Emily, it's not something that guys get. Yeah. I'm saying, Emily, what'd you find out? Emily, Emily, Emily. Uh, hi, Dr. Drew. Hi, Emily, what'd you find out? Okay, I'm really embarrassed because it was so anticlimactic, and now I feel like and I feel like you only let me on the air because I go to Stanford, but I'm not really that dumb. And my friend and I, my best friend and I, oh my God, wait, hold on a second. I do Okay, okay. Like, we were going to call and like, prove that we weren't stupid love line listeners. And he used to always like yell about how stupid his listeners are. But, okay, so the reason why they have red feet, and I like talked to three of them to confirm this, and this is ridiculous, because my friend was so embarrassed, he chased people out of the room. It's because, like, okay, do you know what handedness they are? Their penis curves in that direction, and then they pee on that foot. And then when they pee on that foot, they spend a lot of time cleaning off their foot, which is why it's red, because they were cleaning their foot. Well, 
I, I think wow. they made that story up too, frankly. <laughs> That's uh, amazing. Guys do pee on their feet, uh, and then they usually just don't. Just most of the guys when they walk in the shower pee on their feet, and then just go right on about their shower. They don't do any special yeah. cleaning, which, which I'm sure will make you even happier to hear that. I usually lay on my back and pee all over myself. <laughs> <laughs> and I never turn red. And he never scrubs after. And I never, never scrub, never. It's just, it, because it's sterile. Oh, okay. Oh. So I still have this and bother scrubbing their feet anymore, and it doesn't matter in the first place? It's all doesn't matter. It's all something. It's so called a golden shower. They're still kind of screwing with you, Emily. Tuition at Stanford just dropped by like 50%. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. We really are smart. I know. I you promise. have to be there. There's we no are. doubt in my mind you're smart. But uh, book smart and uh, other kinds of smarts sometimes don't always add up to the same thing. Just uh, just saying. Just saying. Jay, what do you think? Red foot? Uh, yes. Actually, Emily, to really sort it out, to, honest to God, I'd have to kind of examine it. And and that sounds weird, but I'd have to examine the red foot to know what we're talking about here. And people don't really know how to describe or look at dermatologic issues. So here we go. Let's see. Where should How about I go? pee on my foot right now and you check it out? Well, then you have to scrub it afterwards, I though, see? Well, so. I will. D, what's up? Okay, first and foremost, Jay, um, my friends and I are huge cult fans of yours, and you're the sexiest thing ever. Mm, yes, nice. thank you. So, Why should it be cult? It's mainstream. Yeah. Well, I know, but we every Thursday we get together and love on you and watch your movies. So Every nice. Thursday. That's every nice. Thursday. Well done. Nice. Yeah. But the problem is that I um, kind of messed with one of my friends. Um, male or female? But my, it, it, I messed with a male friend, but um, it was her. It was a guy she was dating. Uh-oh. So um, that's what that, I... That's a, that's a sacred rule you've broken, right? Yes, it is. And I've been, like, sick with guilt and wanting mm -mm. to die and everything. And now we're dating... And dating who, dating the same guy? I'm dating the guy, and I don't know how to tell my friend. Oh, D. Yeah, and it's been a problem now because I haven't been able to get together with my Thursday Silent Bob night. <laughs> because wow. she's she's one of the friends in that group. Yes, yeah, she is. So, Jay, you were intimately involved in this mess. I, yeah. Give her some advice. I, I it's like you're none. speaking to her right through the television, the, the video screen they're watching. <laughs> I, I have no advice for that. Well, let's no. think about it. She screwed, she sort of um, messed up and then kept going. So wait, she is, the, She's is he dating. dating the other girl too or no? No, I'm dating the girl's boyfriend. Or Yeah, but well, are they still dating? No. <clears throat> he stopped talking to her. So they stopped talking for other reasons and behind her back you're dating him now. Or did he stop? Dating, they were dating and then I started to um, sleep with him. And you, then, you stole you stole her boyfriend. Yeah. Does she have any idea this happened? No. Is she trying to talk to you about uh, her broken heart because this guy suddenly left her? Yes. Oh, that's got to be weird. Yes. <laughs> and I've been with her when she's tried to call him. Oh, so dear. First question is why would you uh, why would you date a guy that did that to your friend? Don't you think he'll do this to you? I'm a twisted bitch. Yeah, that, well, that's been a. Uh, Don't you have a couple other cute friends? I'm sure. I bet he's gonna pass you all. He's gonna yeah, get he'll go. Piece all, he'll move his. along. Let, let, do you need to know? Remember these words. What Jay is alluding to here is that you want to know how your relationship's gonna end with this guy. Just look at how his last one ended. That's, That's exactly how yours is going to end. That's a side issue that I've been having with him, too, like my trust issues. But he's, he's been good. And yeah, well, for the time being, he will be. And then he's going to move on and do, do something like this good? to you. Yeah, by the way, she thinks he's good, too. Yeah, yeah. So when, when were you messing around with him? Where was she? Would he tell her he was? He would tell her that she's uh, he's going out with the boys and stuff. No, he wouldn't talk to her because he's very like. He just wouldn't answer the phone. He, yeah, he's very secretive and stuff. Secretive, cowardly, I'd call it. Yeah. Yeah. Secret. It's amazing. <laughs> That's like the worst, I think. Yeah, D. Uh, He's a good guy. Mm, oh yeah. yeah, great guy. <laughs> this, this is again how little women know about men. This is a bad guy. He's, he, he's he, it's like saying. Except for the fact that he abuses little boys, or that he's a murderer. But great guy. You'd really love him. You'd love hanging out with him. Now, D. Here's the deal. You have to. You've lost this friend. You have to realize it. Oh. God. And you have to give her at least the respect of telling her what you've done so she knows that she needs to move along and let her get angry with you and let her reject you and whatever she has to do because that's the you, you, you deserve that. That's the price of what you've done. Mm -hmm. 
You've, you've really been a poor friend, and you don't deserve to be her friend right now, and that's reality. And you've got to let, you've got to give her at least the dignity of being able to break it off with him and move on so she's not wondering what the hell happened and what's the matter with her. All right, thank you very much, sir. Of course, you're not going to do that. You can no, I... hide out. You are going to do that? Really? I, uh, all balls up somewhere. <laughs> yeah, you don't want him to do it either. You need to do oh, it. Oh, yeah. This is, this is mano a mano, girl yeah. to girl stuff, okay? Yeah, next Thursday or this Thursday. <laughs> Mm, oh, over over your <laughs> films. <laughs> nice. You know what? And she's not going to believe she, that guy on the screen there. You know what he told me? <laughs> he told me I should tell you this. Yeah, we're going to call the hospital. Uh, Jeff, 18. Yeah, um, I had two things. One's a lot more important than the other one. Um, first off, I'm really worried about the kid I babysit up the street. Uh, I kind of think his dad might be molesting him. Why? Well... Like, I always thought he acted, like, a little, like, feminine, kind of. But, I mean, like, he always wants to do stuff like wrestle, which is, I like, I mean, I understand that. I was a kid. Well, I still am a kid. But either way, like, I, when he when I put him to sleep, like, he's, like, afraid of the dark and stuff. But then when I went on his dad's computer, I found, like, gay porn. And I, I don't know, I just... So far, you haven't told me anything that leads me to believe that this well, man is doing. Well, I know, I know, I know. It's more of like an intuition kind of thing, which is, well, not, yeah. Do you want to make a report to the Department of Child Protective Services? You can do that. In fact, that's really what you ought to do: is call them, make an anonymous report, tell them what you observed, and they'll give you some advice on how to how to sort of uh, proceed. Probably, you're not going to do anything. You know, there's really not much you can do. It's, you don't have no, you have, don't have any evidence. Maybe no, they can notify the pediatrician that takes care of this kid. Keep an eye open for something that might be going on. But you, as an 18-year-old, are not going to be able to do too much. And by the way, all these things that you're sort of judging these guys on. I mean, it's normal for a kid to be afraid of the dark. It's normal for a kid to want to wrestle. Whether or not he has, you know, uh, sexual orientation issues or gender identity issues that has nothing necessarily to do with uh, abuse issues. Sin 22. Hi. Um, hey, actually, on? my question was if it's harmful for, like, our health, like, girls, to have, like, hardcore sex when we're, like, in our period. Jay? Is it, like, that? harmful? Or? Am, I, am I into doing it? or? Excuse me? Sure. It but is? I don't, I, don't, I don't see why it'd be harmful. What makes but you, I'd want it to know. You, what makes you think it'd be harmful, Sam? Like, because sometimes like, it kind of, like, hurts, like, in there. Yeah, the, the hurting is more the general inflammation that occurs in and around your period, and uh, there can sometimes be ovarian cysts that's still healing too. So they, 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 obviously you want to avoid things that hurt just because that's your body telling you you should, but it's not as though there's some specific medical problem you're going to get into, except that if you get have sex with a guy without a condom who has like a sexually transmitted disease like chlamydia or gonorrhea, uh -huh. it can develop into PID, and other bacteria too can, can predispose to that. So you can get tubal infections, in and around your period. So there's some added risk, but it's not because of the hardcore quality of the sex. Okay. So is it better to wear a condom when you're actually... Yeah, all things being equal, it is. It's better to wear a condom anyway, all the time. Okay, sure. But it's not, again, it's not the, the activity that's the problem. It's the introduction of bacteria. Okay. 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 Thank cool. you, Dr. Drew. All right, my dear. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right, Pete, 20. Hi. Uh, uh, I wanted to know if there's... I heard vitamin E will straighten your penis out. Jay, got any curve? Yeah. <laughs> do you, do you dress really. to one side or the other? Uh, no. Like straight up. What? Probably at like a 45 degree angle there. You mean a curve, like a, a banana curve? Yeah. That's kind of normal. Normal? 45 degrees. That would be a little bit extreme though, I guess. Does he huh? pee on his foot? What's up? Yeah, do you got a red foot? No red foot. No, no red feet. Uh, I, that sounds normal, Pete. I, I really the the vitamin E thing is for something called Peyronie's disease, where a plaque forms on one side or the other, or on the bottom. Typically, it kind of pulls it over to that side. Can you feel anything in the in the top surface? Any kind of scar or plaque? Uh, I feel like there's like a almost like a tendon, shorter or something. No, I don't, that all seems like normal. But uh, 800 units of vitamin E for a couple months couldn't hurt anything. You can see if it works. The, these sort of more what are called acquired versions of Peroni do sometimes respond to that. Okay, here you go, Jay. Another one for you. This is Sharon, 16. Uh, hi, Dr. Drew. How was the one that called with the James dude from Ghost Whisperer and whatever? Okay. You remember me. And I was basically wondering, why is it whenever 
I'm in class sometimes. Why is it I have these odd immediate bursts of sexual urges and I don't even feel like I'm horny or whatever you want to say. We're having trouble following you, Sharon. It's like sometimes during my morning classes and my after lunch classes, I have the I have these urges to have sexual relations with someone or to masturbate and it's it's like really weird cuz yeah. Yeah. Be- because it <laughs> yeah. Because it doesn't suddenly build to that. It's it sort of washes over you or what is it that's weird? It's like it's like it it bursts up out 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 of nowhere right in, well like usually it's in, right in the middle while I'm doing an essay or writing nice. or whatever. And it's it like really it is a problem, isn't it? Nowhere. It's not fair. What was God thinking? <laughs> and I got a question. Yeah. Who was that that mocked me? I don't know. They copied me when they when I said yeah. Oh, it's Jay. Jay from. Oh Jay. yeah, that was me. Oh. Jay and Silent Bob, Clerks, Clerks too. Cool. And a, and a Paris Hilton film too, right? Yeah, yeah. What was that like? It was, it's good. It's is she was that before she was uh, as, as present as she is now, all, all over everything. Um. Present? What do you mean? I mean, she's just everywhere now. She's like oh, yeah, this yeah. huge sort yeah, of. Yeah, it was. Uh, we did that. How long ago was that? About ten months ago, I think. I oh, so that she was still, yeah. you know, it was she an interesting person. Yeah, it wasn't too long. No, yes, I've known her for a few years now. But how do you guys know each other? Through Kim, Kim Stewart. That's how I know Jack too. Is huh? I don't know. Huh? Yeah. Jack Osborne. Yeah, we know. About, remember earlier we were talking. We we're talking about, about Jack. The, the Jack was supposed to be on the show tonight, and yes. he tells the story real quick about him calling up. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he called me up saying that uh, he. I, just, I don't, still don't understand. He just was like, I he have forgot. to leave town, or I forgot, and. I was like, all right. So, he said that he didn't want to just leave. You know, leave us hanging. He leave gave us somebody hanging, good. So. That's good. Jack always comes through. He's a responsible guy. He did. He called and called, and then my phone died. And he was like, then he started texting me on my sidekick. He's like, "Where'd you go, dude? What's going on? <laughs> You're trying to get away." Mm-hmm. All right, Jason Muse is here from Jay and Silent Bob Clerks. Phone number is one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. Give us a call. We'll be right back. Love line. We'll be right back. Love line. One eight hundred L O V E one nine one. I'm Doctor Drew. He is Jason Muse. You know him from Clerks. Bottoms up, Clerks 2, coming up this summer. Jay and Silent Bob, he is Jay. And this next call, I'm very curious about. Jessica, 19. Hi, um, Jay, I had a question for you. Sure. Um, I saw the evening with Kevin Smith, so all the colleges, the stand-up kind of Q&A he did. Yeah, yeah. And is that fun? Hang on a second, Jessica. Okay. It was That's fun. cool, right, isn't it? Yeah, it what is. What schools do you go to? All over. Yeah. There's been a bunch. We just did one, though. We did one in... Uh, in um, London, and we did one in Toronto. Wow. It's going to be Evening with Kevin Smith, too. That's nice. like the second one. It's called Throw the Podium Down or whatever. Nice. But uh, that's another four-hour Q&A. Mm. And they weren't colleges. They just were Q&As that they Community. threw together. Yeah, because he does that a lot, too. And oh, that's he cool. Just, he really about does, and I just about... go with them. <clears throat> about everything. They ask questions about movies, mm. and he tells them. He's really, he's really good at it. He could go for, like, five six hours wow he just goes on people ask questions and he just runs with stories and and stuff and neat it's good so what was your question was there a question yeah no so he said he has a bunch of stories about you but there's one in particular that i had a question about there was one where he said that you came in after school and then you kicked to the door and you just started performing fellatio on everything but yes, that was at the community yeah, center I was saying earlier where I met Kevin. Uh, well, we, well, not where we met, where we started hanging out at this community center. Yeah, when you were in? When I was young. In high school or whatever. Yes, I was still, I was like 15. And what happened? <laughs> no, and they just, I'm just, was a, still a little obnoxious, but I was way obnoxious then. And I used to just run around and entertain myself and pretend to suck things off and all, you know, just different stuff. I used to pull my, you know, say, 
Did you say balls? Yeah, absolutely. I just pull, yeah. <laughs> just pull my balls out and stuff. So, do you, um, you, you, do you hang out with Steve-O ever? He's still doing I, I it. I mean, you, he's still pulling his balls oh, out. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I try not to too much. I'm not sure anymore. he, he uh, actually performed oral on the football team, but but no, no, it wasn't on other. It wasn't on people. It was a video game. That's Kevin's story. Is, is like I don't really remember it. I remember stuff like that, and uh, I'd run in, and there was a what was the asteroids machine? Remember, you used to have the yep, the there's one ball? here at the Rock, yeah, yeah, and and there you know it's there's nothing to really. But I, I was see. doing that. I see. And I was going to like the flagpole. And Anything that's, that stood pencil. out and stood up. Yes. Ah, uh, nice. Kind of like and a that's circus how he seal? said. That's when he said because before that he you know he was like a little kid and he was obnoxious, but then he said after that he was like this kid's funny and he's don't really care that anyone's watching. That's the story he tells. I don't really remember that. And you did something like that in time. Clerks too. Yeah. Like you got down on your knees and you were imitating oh, some circus slot. seals. Slot. Yeah, circus seals, exactly. Yeah, a lot of the yeah yeah. That's how that's in Clerks is sort of how I used to act. In real life, to a tea. Like, it's fantastic. Just, it really is. Just very very obnoxious and smoked a lot of weed and. Well, here's another question, mm-hmm. Megan. Twenty one. This is for Jay. Hey Jay, um, I wanted to know. I'm a huge fan of Jay and Silent Bob. You guys are so awesome. I wanted to know: um, Are you actually sober through the whole movie, or do you actually uh, smoke any of what you're, you know, what the movie's about? In Jay and Bob, the first. Are, are one. you asking? Yeah, in Jay and Silent Which, Bob, yeah, the last one. I think what you're asking in the first one: Were you actually smoking pot? Right? Is that the question? Yeah, that's the question. Oh yes, in in Clerks, I, I was smoking. Yeah. Yeah. What about... Because we did it, it wasn't just, a studio. Not just, not just that you were high, but when you were allegedly smoking pot, you actually yeah, smoked yeah, yeah. pot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it, you know, it wasn't a studio film, so... You could do whatever you want. Yeah. So there was a lot of drinking going on and smoking in, in that one. The other ones, no. Right on. Thank you. You're Yo. welcome. Bye. 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 All right. Now we'll see what this next call is. Is this Kara on five? Is it she for uh, Jay? Let's see. Kara? Yeah, sorry. Um, What's up? I was wondering if you thought that people could really make a decision with bisexuality. Do you think that it's possible to to make a choice? And before, did you think people can't? Before? You talking to Jay or me? You. But what do you mean a choice? What's going on with you? You have a problem? A question? Yeah, I mean, I uh, have relationships with both men and women, and it just makes me uncomfortable. I was wondering if you feel like people can make a decision and stick with it. Uh, well, here's the deal. Uh, you sound like someone who has a lot of chaos and sexual confusion. And when you can't have a close relationship, you will sabotage it any way you can. And so, no, you, with issues with sexuality, with confusion, with trouble with intimacy, no, you're going to have trouble staying close to anybody, whether or not you have the sexual identity issue or not. But having the sexual identity issue just adds more chaos and more trouble and more opportunity for you to sabotage any closeness. You see what I'm saying? I hear you. So that's really the issue. It's not can you choose. You know, when it comes to one's emotional lives, when it's how we conduct ourselves <clears> in relationships, <throat> it's not a cognitive process. It's not like a choice. We're, we're responding to deep feelings and drives. That's what puts us in those relationships. And we can't tolerate that. We can't tolerate the closeness. Those drives push us in another direction. It's not like, ah, oh, no, no, no. I've chosen now to be this way. I'm going to be uh, just with women from now on. That's crap. You try to convince yourself of all kinds of things, but your thinking doesn't really substantially change the motivations and the drives that make it so difficult for you to stay in a relationship. Would you agree? Sure. If you disagree, please go right ahead. No, I, I agree, I guess. Because think about it. It's not, it you think you, do, you, do you think when you, when you go in a relationship, for instance, let's yeah. say, you, you may choose to participate, in, let's say, in recovery or something, mm-hmm. and that helps you then change your emotional life so that you can then be close to people. Mm-hmm. But if you're just someone who's confused and out there and had trauma and you're going to try to force yourself one way or another, you can't. it's like trying yeah. to force yourself not to do drugs or to stay sober or whatever else people try to force themselves to do that are under the influence of very powerful drives that win every time. Carrie, are you with me on this? Yeah, and I'm listening. What do you think? I don't know. I mean, it, it just seems like there should be some way to, to address it and... There is. There absolutely is, but it's not a a rational decision-making process. It's an experiential process where you learn to be close with other people. And there the books start to come clear to you which way you want to go, whether you want to commit yourself to male or female. But when you're confused and all over the place, 
you can't commit to anything because the drives keep pulling you around. Sure. Right? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Should I guess? I She's guess like, so. I guess so. Elizabeth, 17. Yes. You're on with Jay. Um, hi. Um, I Jay's just want to know how you get to be so sexy. I love Who, Drew? You. No, no, Jay. I would never get a call from a 17 year old like that. Okay. Who, who's sexy, Drew or me? I'm talking to you, Jay. I love you. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> no, I love you. You were like, oh my God. No, you have no idea. You have no idea. You're the epitome of my wet dream. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> me and all my friends. Me and all my friends. We love you, and we sit there. We watch Jay's side of Bob strike back, and we sit there. Every Thursday, we like quote it all day. What? Do you have a friend Why? named Sharon? <laughs> Not every Thursday. What? Or, or what Do you watch it every Thursday? No, we watch it like every no. day. Ooh, oh, every, every day. day! Wow. I've never met someone who's the epitome of a young lady's uh, wet dream. It's nice to meet you. It's excellent. Yeah, it's nice. Thank you. Uh, quite, quite a, a, a pinnacle of success to achieve. <laughs> well, Elizabeth, you want to say anything to him before we go to commercial? No, not really. I just want to say I love you, and me and my friends are like your biggest fans, and thank you for being so hot. Thank you. When he's on his way to Knott's Berry Farm, he'll look you guys up. Okay, thank you. All right, they're in Buena Park. All right, Jason we, we Muse. We in Buena Park. That's where we shot Clerks. See? Elizabeth, hang on. We may have more to talk about. Mm. Clerks, Clerks 2, Jay and Silent Bob. It's Jason Muse from all these projects. You know him with Kevin Smith, and uh, he's the pinnacle of Elizabeth's wet dreams. We'll be back with more Jay after this. Mm -hmm. That's right, it's Love Line. Yeah, well, 300 L O V E 191. Jason Mews in here tonight. Clerk, Clerk 2, Jay and Silent Bob. He is Jay. You know him from all those projects with Kevin Smith. Lots of calls for him tonight. Let's start first with uh, Josh, who is 18. Josh. Oh, hey, I didn't expect to get through. And there you I are. Was, um, I was actually curious about uh, the Chasing Dogma, the comic the, that Smith did. We have a copy of it at my local comic shop. And I'm contemplating buying it just because I have Kevin Smith everything. And I'm wondering if I mailed it to the secret if to the secret stash, if I could get your John Hancock on it. Sure. Yeah, and I'm also curious that in the Clerks X DVD, you cut your hair. And I'm wondering if you grew it back for Clerks 2? Or I you... did. It's growing. It's, it's not as long as it was um, in Jay and Bob, but it's, it's getting there. That's but, yeah, I, it's down on my shoulders. So, yeah, right. I had to start letting it grow when Kevin said we were going to start shooting. So. so is that about but, where it's going to be in the movie, or did you go with weave? No, no, it's my it's my real hair. I won't. I refuse to put um, extensions, extensions or weaves, <laughs> as you say. <laughs> Here's Kat. It's 24. <clears throat> Kat? Hey. Hey, what's up there? I am just curious to know. I can get off from sex, no problem, but I have I've never gotten off from oral sex. And I'm just wondering, is that something that some girls can never get off from, or is it something that I'm doing wrong? No, this is this is sort of the typical syndrome. Is here's sort of the primer on female, like the magic advice. No, here's the primer on female orgasm. Uh, about sixty percent of women can only have orgasm with oral sex. Okay. They will not have orgasm with intercourse. They are genetically set up that way. There's another forty percent that will have sex in intercourse. Excuse me, will have will have orgasm with intercourse. About half of them, most of the time, and sometimes with oral sex, about 10% of those, ha about 10% overall, 20% of the 50% group, uh, will have multiple orgasms with intercourse and will not, and will find oral sex uncomfortable. So, the, so basically, the more orgasmic you are with intercourse, the more difficult it is to tolerate oral sex. Does that sound like you? Yeah. What? Yeah. Why? I didn't hear that word. Really? She sort of went. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't, I I, sorry, Drew. I couldn't talk to you because I had to cut the uh, filthy whore's mouth. <clears> but yeah, she said F. <laughs> can I can I talk to her again real quick? I, <clears throat> yeah, if we have. Tell to. me when. Come on. Yeah, go ahead. I'm reset. All right, Cat. Oh, sorry. No F bombs or S bombs, please. Okay. So, so what's a better orgasm? I mean, 
it's just different. People are, women have a huge genetic range in terms of how they're set up, in terms of their sexual functioning. And most of them are in the range where orgasm isn't caused by intercourse. It's caused by some sort of direct stimulation like oral sex. And some of the lucky ones have multiple orgasms repeatedly with, with intercourse only. Okay. Is that you? You have multiple or are you sort of prone? Do you no, have sequential? Just, just sex, not oral. Do you have multiple though? No. So you're one that just has one with, with sex only? Yeah, I mean, you know, like 30 minutes later I can have another one, right? Right, 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 right. Okay, so the, again, the more orgasmic with sex, the less orgasmic with oral, and vice versa. Okay. Got it? So that's no, normal. So I'm that's how, that's how you set up genetic. There's a study out of Australia that showed pretty clearly that it's a genetic issue, and you can't mechanically or by any other means move yourself from one category to the other. Now, recognize that there are, there are a good number of women, maybe 20 or 30 percent, they're sort of in the middle there that could go one way or the other depending on who they're with. An actual physical test, you think? That they did? Yeah. They did a bunch of research. There's been a lot of this research lately. on, on Just a bunch of girls and one dude just went to town. No, I'm sure it wasn't one guy. It was more, I think, probably self-reporting in terms of what they could and couldn't do, what they've experienced across the range of lifetime experiences. <laughs> Ivan, 17. Hey, uh, what's up, doctor? Hey, Jay. Hello. Uh, yeah, my question's like, well, I actually need advice. Like, when I was 15, I was, like, raped. And, like, right now I'm 17, and I have my girlfriend, but I don't really know how to tell her. And, like, Who raped you? Uh, some random guy up the street. He held you at gunpoint or something? What happened? What? What happened? He held you at gunpoint or something? Yeah, something like that. I was, just, like, I was kind of disoriented at the time, and I was walking home, and just, like, bam, it just happened. Wait it, a minute. I, I already reported it and everything. It was like Good. years ago. That doesn't make any sense at all. No. Why were you disoriented? Huh? Why were you disoriented? You're sounding I, disoriented now. Why were you disoriented then? I came back from a party and I was like a little out of it. You were intoxicated? Yeah. And somebody jumped you and did this to you? Mm-hmm. Wow. And so like now I'm 17, two years later, I'm kind of over it. I still have nightmares. But and like, so I have my girlfriend and like we're active and stuff. But, like, uh, it's just hard to tell her, and, like, she'll be like, I don't know. It's, it's kind of hard to tell her. Well, the good news is it wasn't when you were five. Yeah. And it is something you can certainly have a post-traumatic stress reaction to and get flashbacks and all kinds of unpleasant symptoms when you're being sexual, naturally enough. And I think you ought to tell your girlfriend about it. I think she'd want to know about it. It's not as though you were, you know, hurt or damaged in some sort of very, very deep way. You just were, you were... Victim of a violent crime. Have to include sex. Yeah. But I, like, I would tell her. What do you think, Jay? Yeah. Would you tell her? No, yes. I think it would, yeah, I mean, I would. It would be tough, though. I can understand it being tough, but I, it, yeah, I would think she should know. When, what point would you bring it up? Not while they're in bed. When would I bring it up? Yeah. You, you know, the right moment, but not in bed. Yes. Not in bed. So just sometime when you're having... The, when I thought, felt it was the right, right time to tell. Okay. Here's a Zoltan 22. Zoltan? Hello. What's up? Sorry. Yeah, not much. <clears throat> Just uh, lounging out in the car Zoltan, here. Zoltan, <laughs> what's the question, buddy? Here we go. <laughs> Just chilling. Yeah, just chilling. Well, I can't get the radio signal inside my hotel room, so came out and listened to it in the car. Okay, you ready to ask Jay a question? Yeah, um, I'm not sure if, uh, Jay, if you're married or not, but... Um, you know, I'm just, I've been married for probably about a year and a half, and uh, I just got this uh, really awesome job about six months ago. And um, I'm just, uh, I'm just wondering. Uh, t -t Today, you... Junior? What's the job? <laughs> the job, it's, uh, I'm a traveling CNC technician. I work on glass machines. And um, I'm just wondering, you know, how do you deal with uh, being away from the ones that you love uh, for such long periods of time? You do a lot of traveling? How, do I? Um, I do, but I don't think I've really... You don't have anybody uh, like that? <laughs> well, I mean, I haven't when I when I went away, and when I when I have went away for a little bit, if I was dating or, or wanted to see someone, I would. they would just come with. Or you'd make, uh, you'd make sure you came back for stretches. Yeah, would, exactly. Can you and do that, a, Sultan? Yeah, Whatever I hear that. Well, I'm just wondering, you know, is there... I mean, I'm just wondering a little bit of advice, you know, what I could probably do to, you know, make it better, or, you know... 
Not my wife. No, well, there's a thousand ways to connect these days. You can, you know, send little sidekicks. instant messages, sidekicks, emails, to convers to stay connected on the telephone. And then it sounds sort of trivial, but that is important to stay connected with people because that's how relationships are sustained. They need attention. And yeah. don't go for more than a week without spending a little time refueling face to face. Oh well, yeah, well I mean that's the that's the thing that really sucks about this job that I have. I mean the job's great and everything, but uh, I just chance of me being home within a month. I probably home maybe one day if I'm lucky out of a month. Out of a month. Oh. <laughs> what are you traveling place to place, or are you just one place oh, yeah. for a month? I'm I'm traveling like all over the United States, all over Canada. Sometimes I go. You got to bring your wife with you for part of this, whatever it costs. You need you're going to lose this relationship if you don't pay some attention to it. Okay. You have good. You're making enough money to. Have her come out? Well, yeah, but I mean, sometimes I'm not in one. Sometimes I'm in one place for two days, and then I'm just saying time. you got to make yeah. that effort. You got to do it. Even if it's for two days, I would fly her Bring out. Bring her out. Let's pay for another connecting flight. Just keep her with you. Christina, twenty-three. Uh, hello. What's up? Hello. Hello. You're on with Jay. Jay and Silent Bob. Jason Muse. Oh my lord. <laughs> well, um, my question is: uh, every time me and my boyfriend are having <laughs> sex, and so towards the end. It's like he's got this big thing of pretty much turning me over and wanting to give me anal, but I'm just, like, too scared. And I, I don't know if this is something you guys just love doing or or what. It's oh, Jay, it's for you. No, I, I'm not. I mean, I'm not into that. No. Does I'm he, not into anal at all, really. Is he, I, I cannot understand that whole thing. It's yeah. just That is just a bizarre impulse we play on. Are, you, are is he just into that position, or is he actually pushing, trying to persuade you to have anal sex? He's trying to persuade me to, but I'm just too scared. Well, uh. every time you're saying, you're saying every time towards the end he wants to put in a duty hole. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, that just don't se seem right to me. Ever see American Me? Is it? Is it American Me? With I have. Do, I have. You have seen that? Do you remember when dude there. gets out of jail and he goes home to his wife? And what he, happens? Yeah, he turns like her he over. <laughs> he turns her over and he just is so used to being, he was in prison for whatever amount of years. And, wow. You know, so I don't know. Crazy. Maybe something like that. I don't know. Mm. Hope not, though. How long have you been with this guy? For three years. Yeah. And, he, and each time he's done this to you? You know what? Towards the second year and now going on the third, it's 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 been going about that way, and I don't know. I just like oh Wait, no, I, you know, let's do something else. <laughs> but does he does he sort of like that position? Is my question. Uh, you know what? We've we've gotten down to that position, but it he's putting it elsewhere. It's, right, and that's what know, he likes? Yeah, that's, he likes it, but he just wants to try anal. And I'm turn your radio there. off. Yeah, turn your radio off. Here's okay. the deal. Christina, uh -huh. why do you put up with this? You don't want to do this. You don't have to. You're in control. Cut it out or you're cutting the whole thing off. It's very uh -huh. simple. Or make a deal with him. Tell him if you, you know, he brings you to Hustler store, you get a strap on and let him do it to him. If he lets you do it to him, then you'll let him do it to you. Well, you know what? I've mentioned that to him and he's very, no, no, we can't do that. And I don't know. Exactly. Christina, don't get into this giggly. Oh, no, not that. Hey. Make it serious. No. Cut it out, or you're not having any sex. It's very simple. Believe me, he'll drop it then, okay? Okay. All righty. I wonder if that was bogus. All right, this is another call for Jay. Jimmy, 30, what's up? Jimmy? Don't think he's there. This is uh, Javier, 18. Uh, hello. Um... Uh, I remember a couple of weeks back, uh, you, Dr. Drew, you, you uh, um, brought up uh, th that when you were like in your late teens, early 20s, you'd get these really bad panic attacks. I did. Yeah. And um, I've, I've been getting my own for the past couple months. And they're usually um, uh, probably like the 20 or 30 minutes before I, I, I go to sleep. I'm in bed. Uh -huh. And what will trigger them is uh, I'll just think about... Um, it's not even like a sexual thing with a girl. It's almost as if it's it's something that's pre foreplay, something that can get you aroused and mm -hmm. excited, mm -hmm. just like her flicking her hair back or. All right, and what's the question? Um, and and, and th this is what triggers the, the panic attack, and it's about right. like twenty thirty seconds. I mm -hmm. just I don't even know if it's if if it is a panic attack, but I just get into this state where. I don't know, like my it seems like there's like a thousand birds in my head or something like that. I just get so flustered. 
And this have you been with a girl? Huh? Have you ever been with a girl? Um, yes, I have. And did you have those reactions when you're actually with a person? Um, yeah, sort of, but they, they it wasn't as, uh, you know, inflamed as, as it is when I'm by myself. All right, what's your question? Are these common? Um, yes, panic attacks are common, particularly in that 18 to 22-year-old window. That's when they start to come on. Uh, if you want to have more often than not, there's sort of two major ways these are treated. One is sort of behaviorally, where you learn to you look at panic as a behavior and sort of learn how to manage it and sort of mm, like a phobia or anything else, you work your way out of it. Sometimes EMDR, if you have a trauma history, is helpful. There's an eye movement sort of technique they use. And then medications are extremely effective for this now, so you might uh, avail yourself of that. Mason, 29. Hey, Jay. What's up, man? You're the bomb diggity diggity, brother. <laughs> thank, you. thank you very much. When you come to Frisco, bro, we'll smoke heavy. <laughs> Frisco? Yeah. And I'm I not nobody gay. from San Francisco said Frisco. Uh, I'm not from Frisco. Yeah, there you go. Right. Nobody says Frisco if they're from San Francisco. I'm I'm from Reno. That sounds more like it. So and, how are you gonna meet you know, how are you gonna meet Jay in San Francisco? Hardcore. What's up? Are you so high that you don't know where you are right now? Oh no, I know where I'm at. Okay. How's he gonna meet you in San Francisco if you're in Reno? No, I'm from Reno in Frisco. I see. But, and at the same token, Dr. Doom, yep. I like what you do. Well, I appreciate that, Mason. Um, you know, you, you and Adam started something off quite a while ago, and uh, I, I paid attention a little bit, but that was that was in my heavy weed smoking days when you guys started, and just recently I've been here, and you guys do, you guys do good, man. Well, thank you, Jason. Appreciate the call. This is uh, Sharina21. Hello? Hi, Sharina. What's up? Hey, okay, I have a problem, okay? I'm with a man, and I, I love him to pieces, but when I get off myself, I picture women. and I By, tried by yourself or with him? By myself. I can't get off with him because I'm too busy picturing women. Okay. And I'm trying to see if this is healthy. I mean, I've been with women before when I was younger. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> but... You know, I realize that I'm not physically attracted to them. It's just like a visual attraction, like a visual bisexuality type thing. Do you see what I mean? I like, I like looking at women, but I don't like touching them. Because if I want to touch something, they have, I'll just touch myself. So that was not a good experience when you'd been with women? No, it, it wasn't. Something was missing, obviously. In that. What was that like? What happened? Oh, God. With the women? Yeah. Oh, just, ugh, just messy. Oh. And I, I prefer penetration. And and it's like when I get off myself, I picture women all the time. I cannot picture how, women. How old was this girl that you experimented with? Um, I was 15 and they were 39, 13? 28. What? You were 13? I was 15 and they were 15. 39 and, and 28. So, so they're criminals. This was sexual abuse. I was working at an adult store <clears throat> illegally. All right, this, when all I right so this, these are criminals. You, you, were, you were abused as a kid. And when you get when you get sort of um, worked over by an adult during your sort of developmental stages, that can skew your orientation quite a bit. Mm -hmm. It can it can create a, a coupled association between the high arousal you experience, even though you didn't like it, and just sexuality in general. So this this is really kind of a bad situation for you. What we do in an adult book, bookstore at fifteen? Oh God! Well. They offered, well, they pay a lot of money, and it was, it was, everybody there was underage. But Where were your parents? Shut the store down. Where were your parents? My mom didn't know that I worked there until later on. Where was your dad? Uh, not in the picture. And what's up with your mom that she didn't know where you were? Well, when she found, I lied to her and told her I was working at a restaurant, and then when I told her a few months ago, like, my boss was like this crazy dude he can get into people's minds like he was like this pornographic mr rogers and he worked at this bookstore in oceanside and he pretty much convinced her that it was good for me to work there he convinced your mom and your mom fell for that ass yeah she did because he was good he got into all of our heads that it was just good to work there and he told me i should experiment with women and with other things and all right well i suggest you file a report on this guy well yeah he got his, his store got shut down and he got like arrested because there he impregnated go. like a 12 year old girl there you oh. go okay do you see you see this you see how how dangerous this gentleman is yeah yeah, okay. I, I he has lesson. left. He has left an imprint on your life, mm -hmm. 
And I, I do suggest you see some about this because this guy, you can, it, it's not horrible, but you need a chance to sort this out. Now, on one hand, women do find other women very sexually arousing. It's sort of our image in our culture of what sexuality is, is women. That's what, you know, a lot of women like to think about other women. But this, Serena, seems a little more than average, a little more than that. You're sort of stuck with that right now. And I'm sure you'd like to feel more sexual about your male partner, which is your preference. And that would take a little bit of mental health work. Jimmy, 30, you're back? Yeah. What's up? Hey, Jason. Hey. I had a quick question for you. Being the com comedic genius that you are, I was wondering if uh, if you had any influences on you, you know, from the comedic standpoint. No. <laughs> no influences? It's no, just, not really. It's just all pure Jason mania, huh? You don't believe me. You're like, what? I mean, did you see any movies growing up? You I've thought, That's seen funny. I mean, this is I mean, funny. No, I've or seen Buddy Hackett growing up or something. <laughs> No, I've seen tons of movies, um, but I, I mean, I don't know. Nobody stood out. No. Okay, it's true. So it's Jimmy, true. just he's pure, pure. Uh, uh, just it was more, more of not like the first one we did was just Kevin being himself. And, yeah. So. So it's just. Pure but, I mean, I believe me, I, lo I love a lot of you know. I mean, Jim Carrey, I love a lot. I think's awesome, and you know, there's tons of Chris Farley. Well, I mean, but I'm not saying like I was like oh I want to be just like that. But right. I want to be like Bill Murray. It's not that's what you're asking. But I mean I find all this feel really funny. That's awesome. I just want to say Affleck, you to bomb and Phantom Joe. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. All right, Jimmy. Thanks. thanks for your call. Thanks guys. Thanks. All right, this now is uh, Jillian, 28. Jillian. Hi. Hey, what's up? Um, Hi. And it's funny, the last one before was about pornography. Cause mine yes, it was. Uh, I thought that was kind of interesting. What's the deal? Well, mine is, I just have been noticing lately, and maybe I'm just behind here, but it seems like pornography has changed a lot um, with the verbiage they're using, like on the Internet in the past couple of years. And I've also noticed just culturally, men are just, I don't know, it just seems in general that women are kind of being viewed as, well, I don't know, just really stupider than I think we've ever been viewed in a, in any era. Jillian, I have a great book for you. It's called Female Chauvinist Pigs. What? <laughs> it's called Fe it's a book called it's written by a woman and she is addressing this very issue is why is it that women have sort of gone on with this, gone along with it. And I think some of her theory is off base cuz she doesn't really have any clinical training or anything, but some of it is rather fascinating and, and well done. And she particularly, she associates women's behavior. This is going to sound awful, but yeah. this is what she does. And it, and it correlates rather well the behavior of people in captivity and slave situations compared to that behavior um, versus how women are behaving in their current situation. When you are in a powerless situation, how do you respond? You go along with the images and necessities of the people in power. When, in fact, women have relinquished their power and could assert it again, and take control of things where they don't have to be portrayed in the way they are or participate in this in any way. Well, I, I think what it's confusing for me is I, I, being a woman, I understand from both sides of the coin. I mean, I think the women that are out there doing, I don't think the pornography is bad. I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, if we're all grown-ups, it's fine to look at naked people and see images that are sexually stimulating. What I'm talking about is specifically the verbiage that's changed. Um, you know, we all get pop-ups, we're on AOL or whatever. And, you know, if you're in any kind of site that's even got anything to do with adult anything, I mean, just all kinds of things pop up, and, and they may be unrelated. Like, I've had things pop up that just freaked me out, like bestiality and stuff. I'm like, why in the hell is that popping up? But what I'm thinking of is more that the verbiage on all of it is, it, it's not just sexy images now. It's like, it always has to be this stupid, you know, B asterisk. Uh, TCH, I know we can't say bad words on here. Do you know what I mean? Like, every image is accompanied by the fact that it says, you know how we got these girls to do this? Uh, we paid these hoes great amounts of money. Or, like, it says, oh, you know, uh, we told them we had You're fat. in the movie industry. And, and, like, you know, these stupid broads did this and that, and then it shows the images, and the girls are, you know, getting these facials and all this stuff. Hey, Jillian, I, this yeah. is what men are thinking. If women go along with it, that's what's going through men's minds. They're, they're not thinking it's cute. They're not thinking it's funny. This is what guys are thinking, and it's getting more and more egregious. And that's what I'm saying. Women throughout, there's a guy named Lionel Tiger who's a biological anthropologist, and he has made a point repeatedly in his books that women throughout human history have tamed men. 
And without them, with them participating, men just keep going down. <laughs> they keep sliding. And uh, you're watching that right now. I would recommend that book, Female Chauvinist Pigs. Okay. okay? I, I will. And I need Take to a look at it. Line, but thank you for your... All right. All right. Bye -bye. Very interesting, though. Jay Muse, Jason Muse from Jay and Silent Bob. Clerks, Clerks 2 coming out this summer. Our phone number here is 1-800-LOVE-191. Jay, you have lots of fans out there. You, we found out tonight you're the pinnacle of someone's wet dream. That, that's a first for this show. Never had somebody as a pinnacle of someone's wet dream. It's good. And uh, we'll be back with Jay after this. Call 1-800-LOVE-191 to broadcast your problems to the public. Love line will be right back. Love line. Jason Mews in here tonight. Phone number is 1 800 L O V E 191. I'm Dr. Drew. You know him from many of the Kevin Smith projects. And we're going to go right to the phones. Brian, 21. Hey, Dr. Drew. How are you? Brian, what's up? Um, I have a really good Christian friend, and we always get in these heated debates regarding uh, whether or not homosexuality is innate or if it's a chemical imbalance. And obviously, he takes the stance that it's, it's a purely a choice or it's chemical and it can be fixed. And I was wondering if there was anything in recent years um, in terms of research or whatever that it is, in fact, um, you know, biological or genetic. Jay, you want to address that? No. Mm -hmm. There are, <laughs> no. <laughs> like every human behavior, there's a genetic and an environmental component and a, a spectrum of each. Some people have more of a biological burden, some people more of an environmental burden. But in no sense uh, can it be thought of as a choice in the, uh, any more than, do you sort of have a preference for the kind of person you're attracted to sexually, Brian? Right. Yeah. Oh, I, you, I, I prefer women. Oh, I understand, but do you have a particular kind of woman, particular look, particular kind of person? Yeah, of course. Definitely. Can I change that by telling, teaching you to choose something else? No. Can I, I, can I, I talk I, you out of your preferences? Is there something cognitive or rational about those preferences? No. Right. These are very, very powerful, primitive biological drives that are set by genetics and by the environment. And once they're set, there is not a lot of good evidence that you can change that. Now, they may change to some extent. I mean, if you have a trauma history or right. other things that have sort of shaped the tendency to act things out repeatedly, you can change things a little bit. You can change the intensity of some of the preoccupations. You can change the health or ill health of some of the choices. In other words, whether or not you compulsively act out something traumatically or whether you actually establish a real relationship. In either event, the sort of sexual piece, the preference, the, the things you found attractive really are extremely difficult, if not impossible, to change. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah, just think about it. Said, what do you think, if I were to get in another um, heated debate with my friend, what, where could I, like, steer him towards in terms of... Um, you know, I don't, I don't, unfortunately, afford, afford, that's not an area of, of uh, expertise for me, so I don't have okay. sort of line and verse literature, but I, I'm sure, you know, go to the National Institute of Mental Health and just look up homosexuality, you'll see a ton of literature there. The fact, though, is think about, think about trying to convince yourself or to be attracted to men. Can we, can I convince you of that? No. Right. No more than you can unconvince somebody of that if they have that orientation. Or if you like small breasts or big breasts or small women or whatever that preference is, no amount of choice or talking is going to really change that. Okay? Right. Okay, so great. When, when, do you think, when do you think people uh, people know they're gay, say? High school? Well, it depends. It really does depend. Whether or not it is. Some people are born that way and they know born very gay, early. Yeah. A lot of people have sexual abuse in childhood and can't mm -hmm. remember anything before that and sort of think that's the way they've always seen it. But it's usually something quite early in adolescence. Quite early. Okay, this is uh, Jason for Jay. What's up, Jason? Snooch to the booch, homies. <laughs> Snooch yeah. to the nooch. Yeah. So, uh, right. yeah, I heard uh, I heard one of my friends was telling me that Jay and Silent Bob did a straight-to-DVD movie, and I was looking around for it and couldn't find it nowhere. And, you know, I was wondering if that really happened or if he was just, you know, jerking my chain or whatnot. Yeah, no, no, there's no uh, straight-to-video movie. All of them been out in the theater before. Here's oh. Ashley. Oh, is there something else they might be talking about? No, no. Okay. Oh, my God, no. Oh, my God. Let's, let's eavesdrop on this. Ashley? Yes. Oh, You're my God. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> What's going on there? Turn the radio off, please. Oh, it's off. I'm on a cell phone. 
Beautiful. Yes. What's up? Um, okay, I was wondering um, if it's normal. Okay, I have this boyfriend. I've been with him for a year and a half now. And every time we have sex, I just feel, like, really dirty afterwards. Like, I don't know. I, I can't explain it. Like, I was wondering if, that, if that's normal or if there's any way to fix that or... It's not normal. Is it just him? Is he the only guy you've ever had sex with? No, no. It's, it hasn't happened before. It's just him. He makes you feel dirty. <laughs> no, like, like not during. Like during, it, it's it's great, but like afterwards, it's like I, I wish I didn't. You know, I hadn't done it or anything. You know. It's, What's he doing? What's different? What's what? What's different? Why is it? Why is this guy making you feel that way? I don't know. I, I don't. <laughs> No. I'd better call us prepare for their calls. <laughs> well, Ashley, I don't know you. I don't know him. You're gonna have to help us out a little bit here. Does he do something different or something sort of mm, evocative or weird about the way he approaches you or makes you feel when you're sexually intimate with him? No, it's great. I, I love him and he loves me. Well, then there's no problem. Whatever. <laughs> It's something, Ashley. Yeah. You better try to figure out what it is. All you, you're in, you're either in denial about it, or you have, you really are not tuning <clears> into <throat> stuff. Be, be, you know, sort of listen to your feelings, your instincts about this, and try to figure out what he's doing. Does he remind you of something? Is it something about the way he's approaching you, or demeaning you? With the, what, who knows what it is? But you, only you know. We don't know. Daniel, twenty-four. Hey, Jay, big fan. How's it going, man? Good, good. How you doing? Hey, I want to ask you about uh, Passion of the Clerks. Want to see? Uh, is that going to be a uh... Uh, ten times better compared to, you know, Clerks. Fifty, or, uh, fifty times better. Clerks just sucked. You, you, you all saw Clerks. Everyone hated that. I mean, it has uh, no, to be better than classic, that. Man. I mean, of course it was. How much better can it be? Yeah, yeah, I don't... I mean, it's it's going to be good. Uh, Kevin c is cutting some stuff, so I've got to see some pieces, uh, some of the scenes cut together, and it's it's really funny, so hey, what it's going to be Kevin good. What do you think about having your own radio show on Sirius Satellite, man? What do I think about me having one? Yeah, yeah I think you guys should have your own show on satellite radio. Just go all out, you know? I'm, I'm talking to him about that right now. Drew and I have been talking in between. You know, we're going to get our own show going. Oh, our network on Sirius. Really. As you can see, I don't, I don't talk that much. I don't think it would pan out too much. Oh, <laughs> uh, man, if you're like anything in the movie, then, I mean, that'd be pretty cool. Okay. All right, thank, thanks, man. Thanks. Of That's nice. Kelsey, it's... 19. What's up, Kelsey? Hey, okay, so here's my question. I go out a lot with my friends and stuff, and we're all the same age, and they always get hit on by guys their own age, and for some reason, it's only older guys that hit on me. I mean, I get some younger guys hit on me, but for most part, it's always older guys, and I want to know what the hell is going on, you know? What the heck is mm. going on? Anything distinctive about you? Um, not. I mean, all my other friends kind of, you know, are shorter and more petite and that kind of stuff, and I'm five foot nine. I weigh about 170 pounds, you know? I go to the gym. It's not like I'm fat. I'm just, you know. No, 170. Hmm. So, I mean, I've got long hair. I mean, I don't really think that there's anything horribly distinctive about me. You know, men like women that are sort of curvy. They really do. They, they Women think that men like the sticks that are on Cosmo or L whatnot. Uh, but for the most part, men kind of like women, are, especially up in Alaska, it's a liability to be skinny. <laughs> uh, not in Anchorage. I mean, Anchorage is like any other city, but... Except it's, it's so, I've been to Anchorage. It was like 20 below zero. I, you couldn't walk across the no, street. No, it does not get to 20 below. Anything. I couldn't walk like, across the street, walk Kelsey. I couldn't walk. And, <laughs> and I stayed at some hotel downtown there with, like, had glass windows. and was so cold. Just the, they didn't have curtains in the window or something. It was, it was unbearable. But, okay. I, I don't. I, I, you know, I've seen it get down to negative 10, and that's pretty bad. But you're a baby if you can't well, handle it. It was windy, too. I am a baby. Absolutely. <laughs> and it was windy, too. <laughs> Oh, and, and yeah. by the way, n now you're talking the language of people that live in Alaska. This is why the guys are attracted to you. You're, you're made of hardy stock. <laughs> oh, well, so, I mean, but, I mean, even when I go down to Laura Pretty, me and my friend just really took a trip to San Diego, and, you know, primarily it was only older guys that hit on me. And I just, hmm. I can't understand it. I mean, because I'm and not... That's the way you really carry attracted. yourself. How much older? Um, like, you know, in the their late 30s, their 40s, their 50s, I mean, oh, 50s, my. 70s. Jeez. I well, you yeah, maybe not seventies, <laughs> maybe not seventies, eighties, nineties. Ten <laughs> guys are yeah, canes of the Crips. <laughs> I mean, the guys out of their out of their coffins. It's okay. <laughs> I mean, I just I don't understand it, and I it's not just me noticing it. In fact, one of my last boyfriends was like, "Hey, you know, you you get hit on by a lot of old guys and." Like, they can't, they can't tell me why, and it's always bothered me, and I figured you guys might be able to answer that question. 
Well, you're you're hanging out with you know you're at a sort of a a crossover age when 19 year olds can look like young, very very young people, or can look like adults, and maybe you're somebody who looks more like someone in their older 20s and just more like someone that an older person would come up to and talk to, who's hanging around with a bunch of young people. You know, it's weird. Older men will not come along and look, be with people that remind them of children, a healthy older person. But if somebody's an adult. Late twenties, thirties, guys will think that's fair enough. So maybe you just look older. So I don't know. I guess maybe I can look older, but yeah. I don't think I look particularly that much older. Do so you think it's just that I look older than my friends, or I think so. That would be, that'd be the easiest explanation mm -hmm. without us knowing you, whatnot. That's that's about the only we can come up with. Would you say, Jane? Yeah. Okay, Haley, what's up there? Hi, this um, comment is for Jason Muse. I'm like a big fan, and I saw you at Comic Con about two or three years ago. I think you were promoting um, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Okay. And I was just wondering, are, are you planning to go back to Comic Con or? Oh yeah, we we. Yeah, for sure, we'll be there. This is Tracy, 18. Tracy. Mm. Hi. What's up there? Yeah, um, I just had it's it's really weird. Um, me and my boyfriend, when we have sex, like, he likes to make animal noises, and I wasn't too sure, like, if it was an impulse thing or what it was. It's like, it really freaks me out. What kind of noises? Like, dog noises, Monkeys? horse noises, like, every animal noise you can think of. Like, it's, it's amazing. Your boyfriend? Yeah, my boyfriend does. Is there it's any like, particular sort of positions? Like, in any position, it doesn't, it's like, usually, uh, like, from the back, <laughs> and... He, like, wants me to, like, touch his, like, outer layer of his butt. And it's, like, I don't know. He makes jokes with his friends all the time. It's like, um, I'm having a rim party. Do you want to come? And I'm not too sure if he's gay or what it is. Give us an example. I, I'm trying to get a, a, my head around these animal noises. Like, like what? Give us an example. Mm -hmm. right? Help help us out here. I like, dog noises. Like, he barks and stuff. And like, and like, it's, here, let's hear it. What, what does he sound like? <laughs> I really got to bark. <laughs> Because I, 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 I can't, I can't imagine what you're talking about. Like, I don't know, like woof, woof. Yeah, like things like that, and like he, like any noise, like bird noise, like he chirps and things like that. <laughs> you have, Andres, you've got to give us an example, please. Um, just like I don't know, he just like chirp. <laughs> like I don't know, he just makes different noises. Does he have Tourette's or something? Or what, what are we talking no, about? No, no, he's normal. I mean, but it's just I don't understand. Doesn't sound like, normal. Is he goofing around? Oh, he's like he he's like serious when he does it. Like, like like you know how like you're regular having sex and like you'll moan and stuff like that. Like he's serious like about the noises. You're not going to give us an example. Well, like my fingers oh, over the hold button. Huh? I'm about to hang up on you, so you got a couple seconds here to get around to it. You gonna you gonna tell us? Like that. Like what? Like. So it's just a, gr a grunting. Yeah. Oh, there he is. So it's a yeah. bogus call. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's kind of like that. So it's bogus, right, Tracy? Is he there right now with you, putting you up to this? No, I mean, like he told me, like he, like I asked him if I can call about it because, like, I was kind of worried about it. And what did he say? He just, he doesn't really say anything about it. He's like, it's like it's nothing. Like, I guess he thinks it's normal. But Is he there in the room with you right now? Can we talk to yeah. him? Let's yeah. Let's talk to him. Give, give him the phone. Okay. Hello? Hello? Hi, what's your name? Hey, Chris. Hey, Chris, you know the international laws of bogosity. If we call you out on a bogus call, you're required to fess up. Okay. So, bogus? Yeah, yeah. All right. Good try, though. And good job putting your girlfriend up to it, too. It's a rare man that can get a girl to cooperate with a bogus call. All right. All right. Good luck now. <laughs> wow. There we go. All right. This now is a Sabrina, 34. Hey, how y'all doing? I like We're good. It's funny. Good, good. Okay, I'm practicing celibacy because, you know, in this day of AIDS and HIV and everything, uh -huh. it's just a wonderful thing to do. So I just wanted oh, to know. Oh, no, you didn't. And? <laughs> and? Don't put, don't put those little things on. This is serious. Yeah, I'm listening um, to you. Go ahead. The benefits of it also to encourage other people that it's okay. And also, how did you get started, Dr. Drew? Because I'm in, I like sex. It's not like I'm against it or anything. But obviously, those are my oh, reasons. No, and how did you get started? 
and for a female that's interested in getting into like sex education and talking to people about it, what kind of steps do you suggest somebody oh, no, take? Uh, get a MD first, and then get a specialization in an area of interest, adolescent medicine if you're interested in that, psychiatry if you're interested in that, addiction medicine. Uh, but you first need to get an MD and understand what clinical, uh, what what is clinically important in terms of people's behavior and the medical issues that pertain to all this. Uh, in terms of how I got started, I just a complete accident. I was in medical school, and somebody asked me to help out on something. I thought I was doing community service back when the AIDS uh, epidemic was back when the AIDS epidemic was just getting started. And terms like safe like safe sex hasn't been invented yet. Discussions about celibacy weren't being had yet. And uh, I did it for 10 years for free. I thought I was doing community service. And mm -hmm. it sort of developed okay. into this whole thing. And uh, celibacy definitely is a great option and, and certainly something that should be encouraged. Unfortunately, a lot of young people are not doing that. And we're sort of, if you, have an, if you ever wonder why it's a good idea, listen to the show for a few mm -hmm. minutes and uh, <laughs> you'll hear a lot of the consequences that uh, occur because of uh, not making that choice. Yeah, right. Okay, okay. thank you. All right, thank bye bye. You. All right, Jay, Jason Mews here from Jay and Silent Bob. You crack up every oh, time no, I list all your... Didn't. You know, I hate that drop. and if It offends me, so I can just imagine how, <laughs> how other people feel about it. Uh, Jay and Silent Bob, Clerk, Clerks 2 coming out this summer. Jason Mews in here answering your questions. If you want to talk to him, it's 1-800-LOVE-191, and we'll be right back. This is Loveline. That's right, it's Loveline 1 800 L O V E 191. We have just a few minutes to take calls, so let's get right back to it here. Here's Sean who wants to follow up on our animal noise call of a few minutes ago, which was bogus, but Sean, you're not bogus, right? No, not. Not at What's all. What's your deal? You make animal noises during sex. I have before, yes. Why, for God's sake? Uh, pretty much bragging rights, really. Just to what to be exploitive of women and say you never, but tell your buddies about it. Yeah, pretty much. Now, are you going to give us an example of what you do? Um, sure. So it's sheep. Yeah, goats. It's sheep, good. Or, Anything else? Um, that's pretty much it. Sheep is how the noise one. gives you bragging rights. Because you tell yeah, your friends you were making noises? Yeah, we actually would have contests to see who could make the most bizarre noises. Oh, we, had, and we had a call, Jillian, about 10, 15 minutes ago, was curious about why men are so exploitative to women. And here we go. Here we go. This is how men work. They're, they're a beautiful <laughs> thing. Uh, don't these women ever turn around and want to sock you? Um, no, not really. It was mostly a joke, you know. She was in on it. Really? You asked her about it? How would you feel if I made animal noises while we're having sex? Yeah. <laughs> she said, yeah, go ahead, Mr. Ed. Sorry? Sean, Sean, we're proud of you. We're very proud of you. This is Max, 18. Hi, Jay. Hi, Drew. I hey, Max. This question uh, basically pertains to the readdressal of, like, the Harry Met Sally idea. Can men and women actually be friends? I mean, Harry would say no, that sex always gets in the way. So I'm wondering, isn't it healthier to try and basically admit the sexual attraction, and move on, integrating that You're back. gay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Drop. Or is that just asking for trouble? What do you think, Jay? I think you can be friends with... I have a lot of female friends, but oh. I, a lot of them I did oh. wind up having sex with. Or, or still stay friends. Yeah. Well, and that's not the question. The question right. is, do you think... All right, there's some that's <laughs> Emmett Harry. Uh, is, is, there, is sex always involved, or sexual attractions always involved in a male-female relationship, particularly in young men and women? Exactly. So, so you're saying... Is, is it? Is yes. Question? I would agree with you. I think it's yeah. yes. I think it's always there. I think friendship, friendships occur in young... I'm not, we are not saying, not none of the three of us, I think you'd agree with us, Max, on this. We're not saying that men and women can't be great friends. Oh. They can exactly. be. But what starts the friendship off in almost every situation I've seen, somebody's attracted to somebody and the other person doesn't respond. Yeah. And they kind of right. settle for friendship. Now, women, generally, in my experience, are very flexible with that. They go, okay, I'll be your friend. They're fine. And they, and they kind of settle into friendship. Men 
can tend to harbor all kinds of plans. They're, they've got a war room built. They've got ancillary you know, plans. They've got dossiers. They're waiting for that girl to break up with her boyfriend. How, many, how often do I hear about women saying, you know, I can't, my friend Max, he's great. He's been around for years. Thank you, and when I, Thank you. And when I, hang on, buddy. And when I broke up with <laughs> Stu, one thing led to another, and there we were having sex. Okay, wait, Max. Max been planning that for three years. Yeah. I mean, come on. It's and true. so, so your good friend that you end up having sex with, believe me, he's been. He's, they, and and by the way, it's one of the differences between men and women. Men, uh, women. If a man has just broken up with a woman, uh, no, uh, uh-uh. she doesn't want him. I don't want him. No, forget it. But a man, it really behaves like sort of a lion in the bush, you know, <laughs> watching watching a herd of antelope go by, and the one on the end with the broken leg. <laughs> That's the one they're going for. And that's that's the way they work when the women breaks up with the boyfriend. Would you agree, Max? I would definitely agree. And just as like a final a closing question, I mean, is it is it a good idea to basically admit that attraction in a friendship and to move on? Or, yeah. I mean, that would kind of eliminate the whole predatory thing. I, I don't – I think um, – it might be, feel it's okay to bring it up, and it, but if you keep bringing it up, it's going to feel a little intrusive, and I think women are going to push back and feel kind of grossed out about the friendship at a certain point. You you need to contain all that and go ahead and be a friend, not keep because because your motivation to keep bringing it up is maybe we'll become friends with benefits, maybe we'll incorporate it into this relationship. Come on. She wants to be your friend. She doesn't want to have sex with you. Otherwise, she'd be your boyfriend. She'd be your girlfriend, and she'd be having sex with you. That's that. This now is uh, Christy, 26. Hello. Hey, what's happening? You're on with Jay. Hey. Jason um, Mews. I have a, is this Dr. Drew? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I was calling because um, I've noticed that it's not all the time, but every now and then, and I haven't really kept track of exactly what's going on at the time, but sometimes when I have sex, I have, like, um, pain in my, kind of across from my hip bone. And, like, last night, it was on my left side across my hip bone. And every time he'd go in, it was like he was hitting something or, like... He is hitting something. He hits your cervix and flips your uterus up and down. That kind of is painful. And if you have ovarian cysts or endometriosis or any tubal or uterine infections, it can be quite painful. So... because okay, I went to the hospital not too long ago for right-sided pain. They thought it was my appendix. And it turned mm-hmm. out they couldn't find anything wrong. And so I'm wondering why I'm having so much pain in that area. Well, why are you going to the hospital? Why don't you see a gynecologist to have a proper workup? Well, I, I, I thought, well, that's kind of what I'm trying to figure out. Do I yes. need to go see somebody or is this... Yes, you like need to see a gyne- Yes, you need to see a gynecologist. Okay. Could be a and cyst, so- could, could be endometriosis... Could be uterine infection, could be tubal infection, could be a lot of different things. Could be nothing. Could be a retroflex uterus or a flipped uterus. Okay. Okay. All right. I thought maybe it was an ovary thing. Do I it have could, time for one more question? It could be an ovarian cyst. That's correct. What's your other question? Um, is it okay? My husband and I are very touchy feely, lovey dovey, and we have two kids, four and six. Is it okay to be like that in front of them, or is that going to make them? No, I mean, it, it's good to be. It's great to be physically intimate with somebody in front of your kids. That's that's you're the model for their relationships in the future and for their sense of intimacy. To be overtly sexual though is a little weird for them. So maintain proper boundaries. Jason Mewes is in here with me. It's Love Line, and we'll be right back. If you need help, call Love Line one eight hundred love one nine one. Hey, everybody, that about does does it for Love Line tonight. Uh, Jason Muse, thank you for coming in here. Thank you. Keep an eye out for Clerks 2 this summer. Wide release? Yeah, yeah. That should be cool. And uh, listen, tomorrow night we've got uh, Mike Shinoda from Lincoln Park and Fort Minor. Is that a new band he's got going? We'll hear about that tomorrow night when he shows up. So until that time, this is Dr. Drew on behalf of Jason Muse saying good night and stay well. I have these urges to have sexual relations with someone or to masturbate and it's it's like really weird because yeah yeah because (laughs) yeah and i got a question yeah who was that that mocked me this has been love line the opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff management sponsors or this station sponsors or the, the, the producer for Loveline is Anne Engold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.